Ah, uh, yeah. I'm telling you, man, it's been a beautiful night. I can see we're starting to have some connection problems. What's going on with the connection, Mikey? Are they knocking us off the air? <laughs> oh, man. Well, we're going to get started before they completely knock us off the air. <laughs> Tonight, we're talking Mandela Effect, the world map, the changes. And like I said, every time we get our hands on one of these Mandela maps, <laughs> you know, maps to remind us of the whole world, we like to post them when we do our shows, you know? kind of reminisce of what the old map is like looking at the new map it's kind of strange man to be honest with you it's just quite incredible but we live in incredible times right and I tell people this is the most incredible time to be alive I mean we could have been born during the days as a caveman (laughs) but those days could have been interesting as well but no nothing is more interesting than what we're experiencing today now, we're talking the Mandela Effect, and we're talking world map and the world changes, and, you know, how could how could some of these things be affecting us? So, you know, without further delay, I'm your host, L.C. Grace. Ah, thank you. We got Mike and Ike in the building. We got Jim, Jennifer, Becky, Charles. Everybody's trying to keep the show on the air as we battle the strangeness that continues to block our signals from reaching the world wide web as our friends join us from all around the world. And I thank you. So we're talking about the Mandela effect and this is one of the subjects that we cover because nobody else will. <laughs> At least nobody wanna keep the subject alive. And I'm like, you don't walk away from a subject that's not dead. You don't walk away from a question that's unanswered. You know, you don't leave a stone unturned. And so many people have done this when it comes to the subject they have walked away, they have left it. You know, as if everything's solved, we know what it is. Okay, peace. We move on to the next thing. No! We have not found out nothing. You know, we still hope to, though. I mean, but when I look at this map, it kind of takes me back. Wow. I mean, a lot of us, you know, have memories, you know. Well, really, all of us have memories, but when I say a lot of us have memories, a lot of us have memories of, you know, another place. That's why I say when I look at the world map today, it's like looking at a new world. When I look at this map, it's like looking at an old world. <laughs> But still, different worlds. You know, as you can see, you know, the differences, you know, in this map that we got up on our thumb now. And it's similar to home or to my memory of how the map used to be, the world map used to be. And now, you know, of course it's different. You know, South America's different. I mean, if you look at Europe and you look at, you know, Japan and Australia, Ooh, yeah, it's upside down. It's New Zealand, different location. Got land masses missing. It's just strange. And that's just, you know, the beginning. And I know what you're saying, you know. How could you say the world has changed? And that's just the beginning. But it is. It's, it's, it just cuts deep. It cuts deeper than just, you know, the world, the world map, the continents. It cuts deeper than that. It's reality. You know, our thoughts are understanding the thoughts. You know, when you see entire continents, you know, change position, you know, right, but under your nose, if that's possible. You know, because that sounds impossible, even saying it. So try saying it to seven, how much? 7.6 billion people. Is that how many now? Are my numbers anywhere near correct? 
you know, because I always think that it's less. It seems like that's a high number. Especially when I look at how many people that are interested in, in this subject. I mean, just sheer um, curiosity alone, you know, should, you know, gather more people, or, you know, just to be curious about the subject. But, you know, it becomes a much bigger task, especially when you think about how many people, you know, are affected. Now, when I ain't talking about your memories, I'm just talking about, you know, this whole world, right? Because a lot of people say, oh, man, I have never seen weather like this. You know, new weather. Rather that, you know, our scientists have to invent new words to describe what even they're not used to seeing. But, you know, these are the warning signs that I tell people, you know, we cannot ignore. You know, when a scientist is standing on national television and he's explaining something that he's never seen before, therefore he has to come up with a new description or term to describe what it is that he's seeing so he can better, you know, articulate it, you know, to the world. Like, we're experiencing a polar vortex. Like, a, a, a what? You know, I don't even think the, a polar vortex killed the dinosaurs. <laughs> I don't think we've ever really had those. I just don't have that as a part of my memory. Maybe I have to do a Mandela effect on polar vortexes. But not just that. You know, these freezing temperatures, right? You know, this is something called an Arctic blast. You know, where cold air is carried down, you know, from the Arctic. No, I'm not a scientist. I'm just regurgitating information. But I'm also smart enough to know when weather patterns are not normal, they're not the same, they're not what I'm accustomed to, because one thing, you know, here on Earth, us humans had a good understanding of was nature, you know, nature. It's like clockwork. When I say like clockwork, I mean, it was like clockwork. We have four seasons, so we knew when to plant our crops, we knew when to dig them up. Knew when the rain season was coming, knew when the dry heat was coming. You know, broke them down for segments, four seasons. You know, like that hotel. So yeah, four seasons. Now, you know, we live in a reality. But we no longer have four seasons. You know, we have two summers back to back, three summers back to back, then a baby fall. Maybe a spring. You know, we were in California, no winter for a long time. Then we had an extended spring. You know, we had a summer that lasted years. And they called it a drought. So they didn't want to admit that, you know, the seasons was out of rack. That we weren't going through a natural four season process. that we were locked in a constant summer here in California where it wasn't raining. They were like, we need some rain. Everything was drying up. Remember the year of fire? Come on, I did the whole podcast. My whole season three was on a bunch of fires and showing people how the fires was burning in a straight line like it was being directed. But I continue to point out things not like we can't continue to ignore these warning signs. But what warning signs? You know, we call it the Mandela effects. But it seems to be much more, you know, because if the map has changed, the continents have changed position, then you could have different climates. You know, you might not have four seasons. Because just the location of different masses is, you know, it affects, you know, everything. 
You know, the weather patterns are different. So here on the West Coast, and not just on the West Coast, but especially here on the West Coast, our scientists are looking up in the sky, and then they are telling us that we have something called an atmospheric river. Now, I'm bringing these terms to you because they have brought these terms to us. And I've heard them say it, and I know these are new terms, you know, because they've even said it as they are, you know, speaking it. Like, I coined a new phrase, you know, this is an atmospheric river. You know, this is not something that, you know, we've had in the past. What? What is it? Where, where did this come from? You know, when did this happen? You know, when did we get an atmospheric river when California was in the midst of a multi-year summer. I mean, not just one season, but we were in multiple years. I mean, we were in a yearly drought. Then all of a sudden, the skies open and it start raining. Raining, raining, raining. Now, it hasn't rained in a few weeks, but man, we were well over our water totals, you know, for, you know, at the beginning of the year. When we had this atmospheric river, you know, the snow caps. And I ain't talking about cocaine. I'm telling y'all, you can't ignore the word of science. You know, how close to the situation do you have to be? You know, do you really need somebody to point out to you that something's not right? You know, because if I'm wrong, you know, say this is the only reality and I'm just a crazy man to think that the maps are changing, but they never change, right? But why are there residue? Why am I finding maps that's similar to what I'm describing to y'all in my memory? You know, why are there renditions of my memory, you know, all over? And then we got the real map, you know, it shows the real world. And it's different. You know, so I always ask people, what do you remember? If I show you this, does it spark any memories? Do you remember why South America was named South America? You remember its location actually being up under North America? Do you remember it being, you know, farther east like it is now? Closer to Africa. Hell, we should have been doing trading. <laughs> Think that we were. It's a lot of strangeness. You know, but in hopes to understand the strangeness, we talk. Share information. You know, because I'm a researcher. And, you know, I'm amongst other researchers. Research the same topic. Now I have to look to see if we're still on the air. We're still on the air, Mikey. <laughs> because earlier we had the black helicopter come through and the signal started getting weak. And I think our show probably got cut. I don't even know if this show is going to be a full show or if it's going to be sliced. You might just hear the intro and then it might just go off. And it might come back on. I'm describing what could possibly happen. I'm live right now, so I don't know what the show is going to sound like. We have to go back. But, you know, we live and, you know, things happen, right? But I try to do shows later. So it's less signal interference. Everybody's sleep except the people who can't sleep. The people like us. The people who are up thinking, wondering, asking ourselves. You know, is this real? You know, what is this? What's happening? You know, why do I feel like I'm one of the only few people to see this? And I come when I talk to people about it, it's not resonating. It's not resonating. You know, it's not sparking. You, know, you expect more from people. I ain't saying I'm disappointed. I'm just saying that, you know, I'm confused. I wonder how far will this go? 
you know, because we've been following this for a while now. I don't even know how long. It's hard to keep up with time <laughs> because so much is happening. I mean, wow. I mean, I do news and information so I get news, you know, across my, you know, my desk. I get files. I get information, constant information. And it's always coming in. It's, matter of fact, I get more information that I can put out. That's why y'all don't get a bunch of shows. I mean, because so much is coming in. And I like to research, you know, these topics. I like to dig deep as I can. You know, I like to talk to a few people. You know, see what you think, you know. Get your opinion. And I do get opinions, too, in the comment box. I get opinions from my team members. I get opinions, you know, from the community people. People in the area. You know, people like you and me. You know, but this is my way of reaching the world and talking to everybody and letting everybody get the opportunities you hear. You know, what's going on? And get an opportunity to... to to hear what you think, because we're talking about the world, man. So this is the world. Each and every one of us live in the world right now. So if I show you this map and, you know, and you look at it and you say, well, I live in South America, and wow, according to that map, South America is, well, way out of place. <laughs> you know, but then you have to search your memory. It's like, well, I always remember, you know, South America being exactly right here. I know I got it. Listeners in South America. Matter of fact, you know, I think a large percentage of our listeners are in South America. You know? And I always ask, you know, just give me your comments. What do you remember? Australia, do you remember New Zealand being where it's at? New Zealand, do you remember Australia being where it's at? You know, your neighbors. You know, Cuba. You know, looks different. You know, the Gulf of Mexico. You know, it's just so much, people. It's so much. You know, Florida. You know, like some of the countries being taken. You know, like the United States used to be bigger. And then it looks like, you know, Greenland is huge now and compared to my memory. I mean, Greenland is huge. And nobody even says anything. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's just weird. It could be just me. I mean, am I the only person pointing these things out? I'm the only person who sees these things out. Talk to people all the time to try to see if you are even in a ballpark. Or if you even had that thought process. But most people, you know, like I said, you live your day-to-day life, so you don't really think about the actual shape of the world or where the continents are at or where other countries are located. You know, most people are, you know, not not on things like that. So when you're showing the world map, it's like you're showing them the world map for the first time anyway. Well, there is no memory. You know, I don't know. I don't know what the world looks like. To me, I think that's fascinating that you can live in a world and not know what it looks like at all. Not have any type of curiosity. Hmm. That's why I say the Mandela effect, the world. Because the world, it's not just the continents. A continent cannot be shifted as far as South America has been shifted. If you look at the map on the thumbnail compared to the actual world map, and nobody knows. Unless, you know, it's... I don't know. It's just no comprehension. You can't tell me that humans have lived on the planet and just don't know what the planet look like. I just can't believe that. <laughs> I mean, I knew what the world map looked like as a child. I mean, there were world maps, like, everywhere. Like, even, like, I don't even know if y'all remember, but I could be open the Bible. You know, there's maps in the Bible. Uh, at least, I don't know, man. It's just my memory. I guess I have a very strange memory. But it's fascinating because, you know, things are similar here, but, you know, 
similar but still way different if it can be that <laughs> so when I look at the world right today I say okay you know well how come more people don't see these differences and maybe it's just me and then I look at like residue of you know the old world and it's just an old drawings or old things or something just pops up somewhere maybe in a cartoon or a movie or something and you see the map of the world the way it used to be you know, ah, it takes you back you know because you want to think that you can write it off and say okay I'm just crazy or I'm just remembering it wrong or something's not right with me <laughs> and then I'm not remembering something that, you know right but then you see a map or a cartoon or a movie or something that shows you you know what the world used to look like and you just can't let it go it's right there So you're torn between two realities. The one you used to be in, the one you currently in. But then you can't get nobody to even listen to. <laughs> Is that the most frustrating part? That you can talk to people about it and you know it doesn't resonate. You're not sparking interest. And I'm talking to myself at this moment. <laughs> like you're not sparking interest that I see. You're not getting nobody's attention. Like, who do you help when you tell people that, I believe that the world map has changed? And then nobody look. <sighs> I believe that one day, you know, maybe long after I'm gone, <laughs> somebody will look up these old videos and like, this guy was really making sense, or this guy was telling the truth, or this guy was pointing out, you know, what turned out to be right. You know, so will it be too late? You know, because there's so many sides here and it covers so many different areas that, you know, physicists, you know, geologists, meteorologists, you know, archaeologists. Everybody should be opening their eyes, you know, because this subject covers everything. It covers history, it covers things in the past, it covers current things, it covers monuments. I mean, you should go to some of these monuments and be like, it's not right, this doesn't make sense. I mean, the Statue of Liberty, is it in the right place? I'm telling y'all, it is so much. It is so much happening. But, you know, are we really that caught up in our day-to-day -day life that we don't know what the world looked like, have no idea, that we don't have no idea what's happening in the world around us? Whether it's locally or, you know, around the country or around the world. They keep saying migrant caravans. But what are they running from? Why are they coming here? There's so much happening. So many questions and no answers. But that just makes me try harder. Man, man, man. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, though. Dark skies, news, and information. I mean, host Elsie Grace, Mike and Nice, Jim, Jennifer. God. <laughs> Thanks, Becky. Thanks, Charles. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. And we'll be back soon. It's been a crazy night. Man, it's mad. <laughs> What do, you, what do you remember? Do you remember this map or do you remember the map that we, you know, the world map? It's strange. Very strange. <laughs> Good night, everybody.